Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Scrub Tier Gaming here, and I'm bringing Dark Souls 3. Now this is probably going to be the first Let's Play on the channel. I've played the shit out of this game, and so I figured I'd bring it to you guys. About 900 hours worth of gameplay, and while I'm not the best Souls player, I do love this game. Oh man, look at that. Hmm. Fantastic establishing shot. Oof, poor fellas. So, uh, this is probably not going to be the longest playthrough that we'll ever have. Uh, it's a pretty linear game, pretty straightforward. And, uh, I know my way around. So, hopefully this won't, uh, won't take too many episodes. Probably going to try and do these in about an hour each, so be on the lookout. Oof. Mood. commentary of this game on the cyclical nature of life is interesting to say the least. Oh god, nasty goop monster. He's such a pain in the ass to fight too. Oof. One of the baddest of asses. One of the best boss, boss fights in the whole game by far. Just really, really cool from a mechanical and aesthetical standpoint. Biggest boy is. Significant individual, large lad. Worse Rikard. Behind her visor. It's because anyone who's done this knows it's futile. Hey, that's us. Classic character creation. So first off, we're going to take the fire gem. It's very good. Um, let's see here. Let's see if, as you guys can see, I've got some fantastic little gromlins. But we're going to make a new one real quick. Uh, let's see here. I like being the great swamp. And yeah, we're just gonna randomize till we get something nice and goblinish. Without taking up too much of everybody's time. Oh look at that. Nice angry ripe tomato. Fantastic. Now in terms of class here, a lot of these are really good. Uh, specifically highly recommend Pyromancer, Knight, Herald can be really fun, uh, starting with the spear. Um, but for today, I think we're just gonna go classic stick, stick and shield. Uh, we're gonna call this guy uh, Jerry. Sure, why not? Good old Jerry. Now the reason I chose this particular class is because all of your stats are set to an even 10, meaning that in the late game our dump stats will be better than every other class's dump stats, giving us just slightly higher base resistances. It's not much, but every little bit counts. Plus, Naked Man with a Stick is always a fun, fun time. Boom, boom, boom. 
All right, step one, take off that damn shield. Two hand our, our thing. Plank shield is absolutely worthless. You are better off getting the hell out of the way. A little secret sneakret for you guys over here. Extra little money right out the gate you can very easily miss. Not much, but it'll help. Bonk! Blue flask, who cares? Bonk? Hello sir, may I interest you in bonk? What a nice day for a bonk! Alright. Oosh, 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 oosh. Now, there is this guy right here. Uh, in terms of min-maxing, it's better to go forward and come back and beat him, but I'm not patient enough with that. We're just going to go ahead and get this over with. Do not underestimate the power of adding a little buff to your, your character. Oh no. Missed the crit, but that's okay. We still did not get... Did not take any major damage. Alright, bye. There's the critical hit. Bonk. Combo of bonks. Again. And critical hit from inside the wall. Gotta love that beautiful camera work. Excuse me, sir. Goodbye. Bunch of early money at the start of the game. Help us get those early few level ups. Absolutely gorgeous. Side note, um, our, our disgusting face is not the side note. Hold on. We're this close to the, one of the beginning starting areas. For anyone who's played this game before, that's exactly how close you are to Lothar Castle. I think that's neat. get to it. Nah, I fucked that up. Phase one with Gunder, the best thing to do is rotate to the right and mix it up on you in phase two here. Best way to beat this boss in phase two is to rotate to the left. You actually want to be on his halberd side, not on his goopy claw side. If you're constantly going to the left, this boss basically can't touch you during the second phase. He jumps, count to three, and then dodge. Piece of cake. Goodbye, my man. Now, something that's really cool is going here, you can actually read the lore of this, which is really neat. I love how they give you the lore in these games based on the items, so this is really, really cool to me. Especially as that's the only time you'll have that particular item in your inventory, because you get rid of it immediately. <sighs> Super neat.
Welcome to the Firelink Shrine. Now for those who haven't played this game before, this will be our kind of hub world. Get ready to see this place a lot, and I mean a lot. So before we get into everything, we're actually going to go over this way. Going to do a little bit of min-maxage. The infamous tree jump. So over here, we can abuse this particular tree's layout with the environment to cheese into an area we should not be able to do we should not be able to get to for a very very long time otherwise now we have to be very careful because if we fall off of this we will die now there's a couple of items you can get in the early game to uh, trade to the bird here to get you a couple of extra resources I'm not too worried about it because we can just come back and do the tree jump whenever so that's why I'm just kind of just kind of running through really quickly here just trying to get all this early game stuff out of the way trying to get us moving forward snake ring will give us 10 percent more souls across the board it's very very helpful especially right out of the gate we'll basically have this on for the entire game <laughs> yes hey what up lady yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know about her. This is our level up lady. Uh, these are our stats. I'm not going to info dump you guys on everything, but basically we're going to be doing a quality build, focusing mainly on strength and dexterity, along with vitality to wear pretty decent armor and vigor because HP is always good. So with that being said, I'm going to set both these to 13 for now and then vigor to 13 as well. One cool thing I will say about this, uh, the fire firekeeper is that she will emote back to you. Or at least they have, uh, they do in other games. I don't know if she does or not. I hope she does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was just lagging. That's really cool. Uh, handmaiden, this is this will be our shop lady. Basically, that's all you really need to know. That you can buy and sell things here. Um, I'm thinking what we may do is go ahead and pick up. Um, heal aid. Oh, do we have anything? Yeah, we've got a few things we can sell. I do think we're going to go with a minor you focus in faith. I really like the faith weapons and using faith spells and stuff like that. So I think it's going to be quality faith for this run for those of you who know the lore. Well, this is Andre. He's our blacksmith. Andre. I serve at this shrine. Mm. As Absolute giga chaff. You're in search of yep that's all you really need to know if you guys have played an rpg before you know what a blacksmith does he's he's really cool get ready to hear pretty be careful a million times in other news there are a couple of other npcs we can talk to around here so let's go talk to this guy And he gives us an emote. No, I don't think. Actually, I'm pretty confident we can do it. You've just got depression. And then there's that little guy up there. We'll talk to him sometime later on. He's not super important right now. But for now, let's just keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. Good old loading screen tool tips. So this is where you spawn off in the first actual level, the High Wall of Lothric. What's really cool here, for those who know the lore, is you've got a Lord Vessel and a Coiled Sword right there behind us. Really interesting, the little lore details, especially like right out of the gate in these first couple of levels. They just bombard you with lore. The lore. There it is, Lothric Castle. That's, that's the end goal right there. Bonk. 
Bye bye, sir. Please stop. Now you don't have to kill these guys, but it isn't a bunch of free money. Uh, so I like to take the time to do a little extra free grinding. They're not much individually, but there's a lot of dinguses out here. Dingai? I don't know what the plural form of dingus is. I'm the plural form of dingus. Aiming the charged heavy on this freehand is, is so hard, that's why I don't normally do it. Ooh. Damn it. Kind of hoping one of these guys will drop a longsword, because it'll be better than the club that we have, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> Most important backstab in the whole world, right there. Definitely needed it to kill that guy. Binoculars, they come up, they can they can be helpful. I'm gonna use them a lot because I like to look at the look at stuff. Which is what you use binoculars for last time I checked. Um, for those of you who may be playing this on your own, they can also be really helpful for mage builds to help you free aim your spells. Because sometimes freehand aiming your spells can be kinda difficult to get the hang of it. No? No sword? Okay. Don't kick the fucking... Eh. <sighs> Get ready to hear that a lot. Alright, time to go for a run. Uh... Yep, there's a big dragon up there. I can't stop to look or I will die. But trust me when I say, there's a big dragon up there. Ah, oh, no. Ow. Oop. Oh, boy. Now the reason there's a big dragon up there is because there's a lot of loot to be had out here. Specifically, here. Gotta reorganize my quick bar real fast. Specifically, that one all the way over there. That is the one that we want. So we're gonna run, 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 run. Even if we die, as long as we pick it up, that's all that really matters. I'd rather not die, but... Eel. Okay, we died. But that's okay, because we got the Claymore, and the Claymore is going to be very helpful, especially for the early game. I don't remember the exact stats I need. Yeah, a few more level ups, but it is going to be incredibly, incredibly useful. Ow. Now hopefully we'll be able to get our souls back from the dragon. And with those souls we should be able to level up enough to be able to use the claymore. I should have went and got... Uh, I got greedy. Oh well. Just shot the fire down. Oh, of course it's up on the ledge. Gosh. Oh, if we get hit, we're gonna die again. Okay, cool. 
We're good. It's all good. Okay, so what we need to do is wait for that guy to take a walk. I would rather not fight him right now. Before we go grab our souls, we're gonna push on ahead just a little bit. Come over here and grab a grab the bonfire that's up here just in case we die again. We don't have to redo half the level. Titanite shard. This item will help us upgrade our weapons. Which will be incredibly critical, as that's where most of your damage acceleration comes from in this game. Upgrading your sword is usually, usually being the operative word, more valuable than upgrading your stats in terms of damage. Unless upgrading that stat would allow you to use the weapon, because some damage is better than none damage. I'm gonna wait for him to shoot again, see if we can trick him into... Okay. Now our complete lack of fire resistance is part of what makes this so hard. Especially because there's so little time in between his, his breaths. Alright, now. We gotta go, we gotta go. some pants that'll help oh man I already had some did I miss anything else no okay now we should be able to make it back through oh no oh no, oh no. Oof. Oof. by an inch okay now we have to fight this asshole Oop. Lothric Knights, you can usually follow up a backstab with a good heavy attack. And then our club does a, a fair amount of stagger damage, so it's pretty easy to stun lock them once we've got them in our, in our clutches. Alright, and with that we'll go back to the shrine and level up real quick. Yeah, we're making good time. Whoops. Very well taken. So we need 13 in our deck stat, and that should be enough for us to two-hand it and use it. Indeed. Now, as we can see, from the right weapon one stat, this does about 40 more points of base damage in it. So the, the Claymore is one of the best starting weapons in, in the early game. You just run up there, you grab it, as long as you've got the, enough stats to use it, it's it'll probably carry us for a, a lot of the game, honestly. That guy take a little bit of a walk.
Got him. No loot for us that time, but it's always worth trying. The Lothric Knights will give you the best loot in the in this whole like starting area out here. So I always recommend killing that guy. They'll also just give you the most amount of souls, so even if he doesn't drop you anything, it's worth it to make a little extra money. first try. Yeah, no problem. Couple of fire bombs, no big deal. We got another Titanite shard in our pocket. The more Titanite shards we can get, the happier we will be. Oh, come on now. Here we go. Light roll almost screwed us over there. Now the black fire bombs will do a little bit more damage, but we're not going to be using them because we're going to trade them to the crow that I mentioned earlier. Man, can we get some armor other than some pants? Uh, not to sound ungrateful, but I am a little ungrateful. Okay, that guy took a fall. Sounds like he died too, did he? Yeah, it looks like he did. Yeah. <laughs> oh darn, I need to go use that. Some bolts that we're never going to use. Pretty decent cell fodder, I guess. And by decent, I mean it's something that we can sell without missing? Yeah. It's a reach. I'm reaching here. So there are a few variants of the Lothric Knight, and this is one of them the Long Spear and the Great Shield version. I find these a little bit more difficult than the uh, short sword version, but not as difficult as the great sword versions, which we'll come up on later. For some reason, their shield bash attacks are very, very annoying for me. Oh, and he re refilled our flask. How nice of him. And here we can pick up the broadsword, which is a pretty decent weapon of the straight sword class variety. Of dudes down there, so I'd rather pick a few of them off a couple at a time instead of trying to fight the whole room at the same time. It's just more manageable that way. See, everybody likes to talk about how difficult the Souls games are, but they're just as hard as you make them most of the time. There are some times where it's like, oh god, this is ridiculous, but most of the time has more to do with how you approach the game than the game itself. Oh, 
Oh no. That big guy over there is worth a lot of money. He drops really good loot, but I'm trying not to get greedy right now. I'd like to just go ahead and keep pushing and we can grab the loot door real quick and fight him in the near future. Now, we don't have the strength to be able to wield our claymore with one hand and... Horizontal hitboxes are really good for dealing with groups like this, so that's why I switch over to the broadsword that we picked up. Just to be able to deal with those guys. That and a shield. Silver kite shield specifically in the early game is really helpful because of its, uh, I think it's the only guaranteed 100% physical resist shield other than ones that are granted by your starting class. And now we have the loop door open. Shields like this are also a pretty good way to deal with dogs because they'll just bounce right off. weird hitbox that the broadsword has on its heavy. There we go. Oof, that guy was tough. But this brings us right back to the starting area. We've come full circle. Take us a little sit down. Oh, we've got enough souls. We can go back and level up. We also need to kind of do a few artisan things. Got a couple of the... Uh, Estus shards now so we can get a few more Estus flasks. We can go trade a, few, trade a few things with the bird that'll help us out in the future. Stuff like that. Just a couple of quick to do things back here. Uh, so with this I think we're going to try and crank our strength up to 16 so that we can use our um, claymore with only one hand. Um, so that way we can use it alongside our shield which will be incredibly helpful. Now we don't have the money to um, reinforce any of our weapons yet, or use that uh, flame gem we got right at the beginning, but we can go ahead and get up to six Estus flags, because we're not going to be using any blue flasks for a while, but something I did forget to equip was our spell that we picked up, so we're going to grab a hold of that real fast. And then we're going to go do the tree jump again, talk to the bird. Get a couple of quick resources. I find the tree jump to be easiest when you're at a lower equip load, so that's why I'm taking off my sword and shield there to help me move a little bit faster. I don't know if it actually helps or not, but it certainly makes it feel like it helps to me. If this game will ever let us through. All right. Now, last time I did this, I got incredibly lucky. Let's see if I do it again. Nope. Okay. I have spent too long trying to learn how to do this royal. Hey, there we go. Second try. Not that bad. Awesome. Something that's really cool to me is that right there is the first bonfire we get right at the start of the game. OK, 
Okay, gotta be careful here. Don't want to take that fall. Okay, so you can trade a lot of things to the bird. I don't have the entire... <clears throat> I don't have the entire list memorized, but I know we can trade him this. That'll give us a bigger Titanite Shard, which we'll need later. We can trade him one of these, and that'll give us a bigger Titanite Shard, which we can use even later than that. I know we can give him one of these, I think. Nope, never mind, I'm a liar. I know we can give him one of these, too. He gives us the callover and the iron bracelets, which are incredibly helpful. They're really good compared to nothing, which is what we had before. Uh, I don't think we have anything else we can trade the guy now, though. So with that, let's go ahead and move back. Definitely don't want to take that fall. Hey, what up, bro? These will let you invade other people's worlds and participate in PvP. He is associated with a faction within the game that uh, does a lot of that. There, but we'll talk more about the whole Covenants mechanic later. I think that's all we needed to do here. Well, we've got some, we've got some consumable souls. Let's see what we can see if we can squeeze out another level. Up. Oh yeah, we should be able to. No, we're just short. Darn. Well, we've got a little extra loot we can sell off. Sell the embers, those are critically important. And with that, we get our strength up to 16. Magic number 16. And we can put the claymore on and the shield all at the same time. Woohoo! Still making really, really good time. We should be able to get through at least this first area, if not part of the next area, before the end of this episode. Depends on how much time it takes. Not necessarily speed running, but I'm not. I'm not taking my time either. Oh, there is something I forgot to do. We we'll have to sit through another fast travel screen. We do need to go back to the tower because uh, we did pick up that key in our in that last little area, and the door that it goes to is going to be over here. This is extremely rude of you. Excuse me, sir. Hey, buddy. Bye, buddy. Hey, we got his halberd. That's cool. I won't be using it, but it's cool. Huh? 
There's supposed to be a dude here, but he's not here. Oh well. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, my mom used to say. Yeah, that guy just didn't spawn for some reason. That's weird. That's really weird. Anyway. Over here is a friend. Jailer, are you? No, no, you're from far away. And judging by the bell, you must be some of that unkindled ash. Remarkable. If that's true, then I have a favor to ask. Below the high wall is a musty little town. Not the home of any lord, just a, a very old settlement of undead. An old woman, Loretta, lives there. Please, give her this ring. I, I, I'm not asking for charity. In, fa in fact, if you do this for me, I'll be sure to repay you in kind. I, I may be a petty thief, but I've more wits than most royalty. I believe you. What do you say then? Huh? Sure, Very my well. dude. I humbly place my faith in you. I am Grey Rat of the Undead Settlement, and I promise to assist you. I like your hat. Give this ring to old Loretta at the base of the high wall. Do your part, and I'll do mine. All right. So let's go check that out real quick. Temporarily boost damage absorption with HP is low, so this will help us not die. Despite the fact that the errand isn't completed, we can go and equip it right now. Which we will do, as carry weight is not an issue given our lack of most equipments. Yeah, I think we can just go ahead and burn a bone. It's just a couple of floors up, but I am lazy. So Grey Rat will be back at the Firelink Shrine. He is also a merchant, but I don't think there's anything I particularly need to buy from him right now, so that's why we're not going back there. We're just going to keep on a trucking. Just going to keep on moving. So that guy that was shooting at us on our way back is actually right here. Let me go ahead and get him real quick before he gets us. Now we'll have a little bit of an advantage as we will no longer be laying down covering fire for the dogs. Who should just get absolutely demolished by the claymore. They get launched by it, which is incredibly good for us. Oof. Just by an inch. Ooh. What's that? It's a big honking axe you got there, my dude. Anyway.
Now we're going to wait for old boy to walk all the way back around here because getting a falling attack on that guy is going to be critical for us. We're also going to keep our, our spell spell casting focus handy because a little extra regeneration can never hurt, especially in this game. What I'd really like to do is... Uh-oh. Light roll off the edge, I guess. Oof. What I'd like to do is get behind him and get a backstab. Yeah, there we go. Now this should be easy breezy. Beautiful cover girl, look at you. Anything good? Nope. He doesn't drop a loot often, but when he does, it's really good. You do have a chance to get his halberd too, which is really, really good. Now we can get this loot we missed last time because I was panicking. <laughs> I do not like fighting the wing knights. They're they're quite difficult. Just so these guys don't harass us till the end of time. All right. Now, as you guys can see, there's a couple of Lothric Knights over here, but we're going to use these fire bombs to hopefully bring them our way so we don't have to fight them both at the same time. Come on, buddy. That's all it takes. That's the double-edged sword of having a shield. Ooh, we got his sword. That's really good. So we need to go in here and talk to this lady. Don't don't worry about how this looks suspiciously like a boss room. The wait has been long, unkindled one. I am Emma, High Priestess of Lothric Castle. Allow me to speak frankly. You will not find the Lords of Cinder here. They have left, gone, to their journey homes, converging at the base of this castle. Head to the bottom of the high wall. Forge on through the great gate and raise this banner to proceed. All right, all right, cool. This farewell gift is for you. It is the insignia of an old covenant. If you fear trespassers, dark spirits drawn by the embers, then etch this upon your heart, and the old Concord will beckon noble blue sentinels to hunt these foul spirits. The Way of the Blue. So this is one of those covenants that I was mentioned offhandedly earlier. So uh, if you have this equipped, whenever you get invaded by another player, anyone else who has this equipped will be automatically spawned to come back you up. Um, it doesn't happen immediately, and it is on a bit of a timer. And if they die, it can take a while for some to respawn, but that's not a bad idea. I mostly wear it uh, not out of defense of myself, but out of defense for other people. I, I don't mind PvP so much in this game. <laughs> Hey, give us a crossbow. Those crossbows sell for about 500, so they're pretty good. And the Lucerne is over here. Uh, not something we'll be using. Another good sell item. There's better halberds if, if that's your style. Now this guy is tougher than the rest of them. You can tell because he's a different color. And that's it. So we're going to do a little sneaky snoop. Try and get a backstab here. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a, not a lot of damage. And I guarantee you, he's going to do a lot of damage to me if he hits. Yeah, like that much damage, for example. A, a fatal amount of damage. <laughs> oh, man.
damn, I did not expect him to hit that hard, but I guess that's what happens when you don't have any armor on. Alright, let's, let's be a little quicker about this. Let's try this again, shall we? Ooh. Another crossbow. Just what we needed. Definitely not a piece of armor. No. Why would they give us any armor? God forbid. We're just gonna light roll our way through the whole game, I guess. It's certainly not impossible. It's not the way I'd prefer to do things. Hey, there we go. Finally something to cover up this ugly ass face of ours. again. Ugh. Those shield bash attacks, man. That was our strongest move, and it barely tickled him. Now, his sword glowing is a temporary buff. It will wear off, but if he hits you while that buff is active, you might as well kiss your behind goodbye, because you're going to die. But it doesn't matter. We got him. Uh, when you first kill him the very first time, he is guaranteed to drop a refined gem, and he <laughs> dropped a lot of stuff. Um, a second copy of the sword is not bad. Some author pants are actually really good. Really, really good compared to what we have on... And uh, we look very derpy, but it is what it is. So with the amount of souls that we have, we are probably going to go ahead and flash back to the shrine real quick. We're going to upgrade our sword a couple of times, and then we're going to fight this main boss. And that will probably be the end of this episode. Yeah, we got just enough to upgrade it one time. Let's see here. I'd rather not infuse it right now. Um, so, <laughs> I'll talk more about that in just a little bit. So, we'll use the spare souls that we have to grab a couple of more level ups. This time, we will increase our health. Because we do need a little bit more HP. Not, not a crazy lot, but a little bit of extra health will always help. And now we don't need to fight those not Lothar Knights as we have finished it. Well, actually, I think we'll probably end up getting to the boss in the next one. So, next time on Dark Souls 3, we will get to the boss of this first area and continue on Mr. Jerry's journey. Um, and I hope you guys join me for the rest of this. This is set to be a fun playthrough. I really, really enjoy this game. I'm, I'm really glad to be bringing it to the channel. With that, uh, good luck, have fun, and remember to uh, always think ahead.